Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about infield defense. Uh, obviously, defense is a huge aspect of baseball, and it is no different out of the park. In fact, as we'll see, it is a huge part of the game. So I'm going to be going through different numbers, and we will be assessing just how important defense is at each position, what ratings you should be looking for in each position, and then who you should play at each position as well. Uh, I will go into a live start and give you my personal favorite players for each position uh, and why. Now, this is going to be just infield defense, but I will go over catchers briefly as well, since they are technically in the infield. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be it. So we'll start with first base. I've got these alphabetically, so we'll go through them alphabetically. Uh, first base arm, absolutely unimportant. There's hardly any difference between the worst and best first base arm. In fact, in the data I collected, the best possible arm at first base actually performed worse than the worst possible arm. So, yeah, arm is really completely irrelevant to first base. I would just skip over it personally. Uh, I don't think it has really any impact on your defensive production. Next to first base error. This actually does have a little bit of an impact. You can get by with low error, but ideally you're going to have a little bit higher. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. As we see, you do actually prevent runs more effectively with a higher grade error at first base. It's a relatively linear relationship, although it does get a little bit uh, squiggled in the middle. Actually, it's not really linear at all. It's just once you get past a certain point, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah, first base error actually does matter a tiny bit. Uh, just having any of it really is good and obviously... Uh, really bad first base error hurts your defense a little bit, but not huge. Again, you can get by with some with no error. What you can't get by at first base with is somebody who's really short. That actually really hurts your defense. I'm not sure why height, of all things, is so impactful at first base. Obviously, it's nice to have somebody tall in real life, but I don't think it's the most important thing at the position. Uh, pretty much once you get past that short height, it's just bonus. Uh, the taller your first baseman, the better. You don't want them to be super short, but pretty much uh, not super important height. Once you get into the six feet range, uh, it doesn't make a huge impact, and it's just, uh, like I said, a bonus. Now, range actually does make quite a difference. You can't play someone with super low range at first base, or it will legitimately harm your defense severely. However, once you get up to this pretty much 60 grade on the 1 to 250 scale, uh, range, it's completely irrelevant. You don't really see huge returns on improved range. You're never going to play someone with high range at first base anyway. Uh, they'll go to other positions. But in general, as we can see here, uh, it does actually hurt you to start someone with ridiculously low range. So there does need to be some kind of a benchmark for who you're starting at first base. First base turn no plays. Uh, predictably, much like first base arm, basically irrelevant to your output in terms of defense. Uh, yeah, basically no change across the board from the data I collected. Uh, I would just ignore it. This is not infield oops. All right, second base arm. Much like the first base arm, it's hardly making out any kind of an impact. Uh, you will actually see lower for second base arm, really low second base arm hurts your defense a bit, but you can obviously get by. Uh, once you get up to 60 grade on the 1 to 250 scale, it's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, it doesn't make really any kind of a difference to have a higher arm. Second base error actually is pretty important. You see a fairly linear relationship here as we go up the scale. Uh, at the higher ends, it doesn't look like you see too much of a change, but there's still something. Really important to have someone with at least a little bit of range. The higher your error, the more important the range. In general, that's true of pretty much everything. But yeah, it looks like a middle tier rate or error, actually not much of an impact uh, from pretty much 40 grade, maybe... Yeah, 40, 60 grade, not 40 grade, to uh, 120 grade. So, yeah, error is nice to have, but it's not huge, again, at second base. Uh, low error is not ideal once you get past a very low benchmark, honestly. Not much difference. Second base range, however, is hugely important. We could see very large differences in every set of collected data. And it really, really makes an impact on your defense. Um, 
definitely the rating I'm looking at the most at second base. Uh, I would recommend playing the highest range player you possibly can at second. This is pretty much just going to be your rangiest position player who's not at shortstop. Um, yeah, or isn't good enough to play shortstop with their other ratings. Turn double plays makes a little bit of a difference. In your modern environment, you really don't see too many opportunities to turn them. But your second baseman still, it's nice to be able to do so. You can save more runs with high turn double plays. You're likely to see most of your second baseman with higher turn double plays. Uh, lower turn double plays doesn't hurt you too much, so again, if you just want to go literally all range and nothing else, it's not going to kill your defense. Like, it's better to have a shortstop with 200 range and 20 um, air arm and turn double plays than one with 100 across the board. Now on to shortstop, obviously. The most important of all the infield positions. I actually did a little bit of graphing with this, although it didn't turn out great, and I probably uh, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, shortstop arm makes quite a bit of a difference, as shortstops have to convert a lot of plays from the left side of the infield, which means throwing fairly far over, actually, to first base. Uh, they do see pretty solid returns on higher arms. You want to get somebody with a high arm if you can at shortstop. It will help your defense. Shortstop error. Now, your shortstop's abilities to save runs is also partially dependent on their ability to not screw things up. It's more important than any other position except third base, actually. Uh, you see some nice uh, run prevention over on the top end and some pretty nasty numbers on the lower end for runs per game. Uh, shortstop error, again, increases in importance with range as you need to make more plays. But overall, it's nice to have a shortstop with higher, and uh, it's pretty much on par with the arm. Not quite there, but I definitely say range, like at second base, is the single most important thing. You absolutely cannot play anybody with below 120 range, which would be 55 on the 20 to 80 scale. It's completely unusable. It doesn't matter what their error is. It doesn't matter what their arm and turn double plays are. You cannot use anybody if they have low range at shortstop or even average range. And the higher you get, you quickly see this number get lower, the runs per game. Ridiculous, ridiculous differences for each increment of added range. Uh, just imagine how good your 220 grade range is. Uh, if you find a shortstop with high range, pick them up. If they have decent error and arm, that will really help your defense. I actually found that this is more important than catcher ability. For those of you who have seen my work on catcher ability, you know how much I love my high grade uh, ability catchers. Range matters even more. Turn double plays, not important. Your second baseman is gonna be doing most of the double play turning anyway. And on the rare occasion your shortstop does, it appears that turn double plays actually does not make much of a difference. Only 0.5 runs per game or 0 0.05 runs per game which really is not impactful and considering shortstop it's basically nothing next to arm error and uh, range so you're pretty much just looking for a glorified third baseman defensively at short uh, if they have turn plays it's nice but it's definitely not a must-have at the position now on to third base which is surprisingly important for defense really bad third base arm absolutely butchers your defense. You can't afford to have a lower arm. Higher arms really help your defense. You convert a lot more plays from that uh, hard throw angle. You're also probably going to cut down on a lot of those bunt singles with a higher arm. So third base, it's really important to get somebody with F at all possible, a high arm. Uh, it's the most important of the three, or yeah, the three truly meaningful third base defense ratings, although the other two are fairly important as well. You can have someone with lower error, but again, you get that incremental return on higher error, and you see some pretty significant uh, runs prevented with the top grade errors. So at third base, again, you should be running somebody when you can with the highest possible error. Uh, I don't think it will really make the difference on who you decide to use, but it just it's important to keep in mind when you're valuing players. Third base range, also very important. Uh, you see pretty linear returns here, and yeah, there is 
pretty, there's not really a definitive benchmark, but again, you want to have the highest range you possibly can at third base. It's not shortstop, it's not even second base, but range is very, very important here. Um, I would strongly recommend playing somebody with at least near average range at third. I would still consider a bat first position, but there are very clearly benchmarks to clear in order to keep your defense uh, respectable, especially in the arm category. Turndale plays does not matter at third base really at all. Um, I would not recommend using that as a measure of the value of your third baseman defensively like ever for any reason. All right, well, now that we have done this, let's pull up just a ranking of them. So I took the approximate changes in uh, their effect on your defense and run prevention. And here are the rankings from most important to least important um, value wise. Now I would put catcher ability right here, number two behind shortstop range off the top of my head. Uh, might even be below second base range, but I think it's above it. Catcher arm. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not sure where it would go right now. It could be like up here, right below second base range could be down below shortstop air. It could be all the way down below first base height for all I know. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be somewhere in the third base area, but I cannot say anything definitively at this time. And that is definitely something I will be looking more into when I try to get accurate defensive weights. Now, that is one other thing that I'm going to say before we go into the game itself. I am in the process of creating... I don't know where it is. It's probably not here, honestly. Perfect, here it is. I am in the process of creating a spreadsheet that will weight your defense and give you the approximate valuation of your players' uh, ratings. Now, I can't say that it'll be 100% accurate, but it will be very darn close, and it will be much more accurate than the OTP game engine is giving you. You could see my example down here on the left side. OTP thinks that the shortstop with higher turn no plays is a great shortstop. It thinks the shortstop with higher arm is a poor shortstop. These are reversed. This guy is significantly better than this guy. Uh, there's no question about it to me. I would much rather have the guy on the top than the guy on the bottom. OTP disagrees. Do not listen to OTP. Uh, for the meantime, I'm going to have to ask you guys to manually uh, do these things while I'm working on it. But yeah, you can see the difference here. All right, now we're going to go to the game itself, and I will find some live players that I think are uh, really good examples of who you should be playing at each position defensively. We do not want the season shortened, and this will be good. Now, while this is loading, I will just say second base, absolutely a glove first position. I personally used to think second base was much more of a bat first position as it's being used in the modern MLB uh, environment more often. But you really do need to prioritize your range at the position. If you can get a high range player with a good bat, great. But make sure you get a high range player. Third base, still a bat first position. But it is important to have good defense there if you can. It will help your team out and... Guys like Cabrian Hayes, who can hit and field really well, excellent. And I guess we'll start unemployed here. All right, so we are going to list all MLB players, include minor leagues, and we will start throwing in some filters. So infield range is at least 75. These are the guys that I would be really happy with at second base. Oh, first, actually, let's increase scouting accuracy to 100, or disable scouting. These are guys that I would be happy with at shortstop or second base. Uh, there are more players with high range that are not being displayed here for whatever reason. But Nolan Arenado is actually a great shortstop. Same thing with Matt Chapman. They're listed as third baseman, but I would have no problems shifting them to shortstop. And I actually think Arenado is a significantly better shortstop than Trevor Story. 
Willie Adamas, he's a really good shortstop too. He's got that higher arm. He's got really good range. Great guy. Chapman, same deal. I was just talking about him. Miguel Rojas, he's another one of those pretty solid shortstops. Uh, same deal with the higher range. Andrelton Simmons is probably the best shortstop in the game. He has a really high arm, so he's going to convert a lot of uh, plays and outs. Ridiculous range. Best range of any starting shortstop. Uh, I really, really enjoy him at the position. Great one-year pickup. He's expensive, but he is absolutely worth it. Uh, there are more guys. One of them in particular that I like is Devin Marrero, who's a free agent that you can sign for under a million dollars. He's an outstanding shortstop. Uh, he, like I said, has 75 grade range, but did not appear for whatever reason. Uh, he has a really good arm as well, and nice air and turn to all plays. He's a not ideal hitter, but not bad either. He's a great utility infielder, second baseman, or shortstop if you need one at the start of the game. Oops, that's not what I want. Okay, back to MLB players. Uh, and we also have Nassim Nunez here from the Marlins. A great shortstop prospect. Outstanding range and such. Uh, really overall, excellent player. Now, let's change this to include... Infield arm, and we will be looking at third baseman. Now, there's a lot more guys who are capable of playing third base. Uh, Wander Franco, in my opinion, is a third baseman. He's not a shortstop. He's not a second baseman. He's got good range and air, but not good enough for shortstop. And that arm really qualifies him at third. Uh, great hitter, of course. Love him there. Fernando Tatis, another guy you're going to want to slide over to third base if you are playing a live game. He is a pretty good hitter overall with, of course, that profile, which is honestly much a better fit at third base. Same thing with Torres. He's another third baseman. Arnado's a shortstop. Wendor is definitely a shortstop. Uh, most of the guys who are qualified to play third base are also or qualified to play shortstop are also qualified at third base. Abrams, a lot like Tatis, you need to move him to third base. Uh, unfortunately, that position is going to be clogged with both of them. But yeah, you get the idea. It's kind of necessary. Mustakas, no idea why he's at second. He is much better at third base, and even the game engine thinks so. O'Neal Cruz, another one of those short stops. Oops, that you want to move to third base immediately. Higher arm. He's actually got lower range. And yeah, just a lot of players on the list overall that you are going to have to move from their natural position because they are simply not qualified. Uh, at third base, I don't really have any preference for fielders. Obviously, it's Barrero at second and um, Simmons at shortstop. Now, a catcher, Austin Hedges is my guy. He has by far the highest catcher ability of anyone at the start of the game. Here it is. Catcher ability is at least 75. And we see here Yasmani Grandal. He's actually up there, too, with that 80, but his arm isn't as high. Uh, he's also way more expensive and hard to pick up. Tower Flower is another high catcher ability guy. Vasquez is probably the second best catcher in the game. He's a better hitter than Hedges and uh, just a little bit lower on the ability, but similar fielding. Jeff Mathis, one of my favorite budget catchers. Caleb Joseph, another one of my favorite budget catchers. Roberto Perez of the Indians, another pretty solid budget guy. And Austin Hedges, the best catcher in the game. He's got the ability. He's got the arm. He hits okay. He's got some power. Uh, overall, yeah, there aren't too many great defensive catchers in the game, and they are astonishingly cheap, really. I mean, same thing with your high-end shortstops. Like, for the value they're giving you, they are dirt cheap. Defense up the middle is cheap. It's undervalued. It's hugely impactful to your defense. Uh, I definitely would recommend prioritizing fielding, overhitting for all your middle positions in field and otherwise. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. I hope that this will help you out in your mission to win more games. And I'll see you on the next one.